The today's topic of discussion is uniting. Uniting, or in our other words, we may use oneness. Oneness of all things or oneness of all sentient beings. During the last four days, we uh, analyzed and discussed about uh, being, intervening, loving, and serving. All these four points are not uh, separate from each other. They are all interrelated. In order to understand the reality of being, we need to understand interbeing. Interbeing is a matter of a phenomenon. We need to recognize them as usually we do not realize or we do not have the uh, <clears throat> mindfulness about the uh, interbeing. Then loving. Loving is a basic uh, ground to make the nature of interbeing in cohesiveness. Free from conflict and uh, contradiction. So loving kindness, in which includes the compassion, the karuna and metri, and then what it will uh, result, the result would be serving, cooperating, helping each other, collaboration, joint effort, all these are come out of uh, the sense of loving, the karuna, and the metri combination. So now finally, to understand in depth what is uh, universal responsibility and how to uh, perform it in right way is the unity of all existence, all phenomenon. They are can coexist without any conflict or disharmony. The majority of problems for the sentient beings are come out of conflict and uh, struggle with each other, lack of harmoniousness. To exist, to grow, to function free from violence meant that all differences, diversity, can remain harmoniously with each other. That is reality. But the uh, conception 
everything is uh, contradictory and uh, they are by nature one to be in conflict, in contradiction or harming each other when it comes to contact that we briefly discussed the other day also. The majority of modern materialism, dialectical materialism, sees the things are not possible to remain cohesively, harmoniously, anything comes together, they need to be uh, hurting each other and the powerful will uh, overtaking the less powerful and thereby the constant change in the phenomenon is uh, going on. That is the different view. And now this kind of view is not much prevail in the scientific world, yet the modern science also do not see everything is uh, compatible with each other and can remain harmoniously, this principle may not be agreed in all cases by modern science people. But traditional way of thinking is that all the contradictions are not the nature of the phenomenon. It is the uh, a standard conditioning of the phenomenon, as we discussed the other day, that all the uh, four elements by nature, they are kind of uh, humming each other. If one is more forceful, the other would be extinguished. But all creative comes out of the cooperation, helping each other, comes in perfect kind of uh, proportion and uh, relating each other, not in a opposite way, but a positive way. By that, the greatest evidence is our body. Our body has uh, the composition of all the five elements. The five elements does not uh, conflict with each other. On the contrary, complementing with each other, helping with each other. And the right proportionate composition creates a perfect body. And that body has its own course of evolution, decay, and disintegrity. That all goes with time. So if we do not misuse this composition, it can remain in harmonious and in creative way for 
80 years, 90 years, 100 years, as long as we live, we can have a, a good health, a perfect combination. So this is the unity of the part of the composite of our body. And the body is a, a smaller portion of the universe. The larger universe is also creation of five basic elements. And these five basic elements sustains the earth, the space, and everything on the earth. So that is the uh, clear evidence of the uh, possibility of unity. And similarly, all the living creatures, the sentient beings, today the conflict between sentient beings are more obvious. And that is the cause of misery, particularly for the human community. Wars and violence and division and uh, even apparently the world is uh, living in a roughly harmonious way. But in the depth of the mind, each human sensible person still have a, a kind of division. My country, my culture, my language. And this is, uh, in a way, indoctrinated in the name of nationalism. Love for nation and nationalism is considered to be a good quality and necessary to have each person whosoever belonging to any nation. By that way, a division is created. And through that kind of division, then the ownership of territory Bino Babi used to say that it is absolutely wrong notion by the humanity created. The natural things can be uh, owned by any particular group. The warmth, the air, the space, how it can be uh, divided between nations, these are all come out of collective karmic force or being created by power, by a kind of a creator which is created for everyone. And to divide it seems to be senseless. When we have a real aware of the uh, economy, no reason to uh, differentiate between the people, then we will have uh, the sense of uh, equality in real sense. Then we have a sense of equality, then we can move the sense of unity. Actually, right from the beginning, the languages are developed. At that time, the ancient humanity do have uh, the understanding of unity as possible, natural, and necessary among the diverse things. So that's why the name is uh, coined through such language, universe. 
unity among the varieties. If it is not possible, then this name may not be evolved. Unity in variety, Vivekita, Vishwa, coming together. So, right from the evolution of language, this understanding was there. But through passage of time, now we are dividing most of the things in uh, different parts and groups. And uh, there are so many things which can use for the division. So therefore, we shall have to be aware that all the um, artificially human created cause of divisions are not necessary, nor it is uh, the real nature of the entire phenomenon. So that, that need to be understood. Then coming to the sentient beings, the sentient beings, each individual is uh, by its own nature unique. That cannot be denied. Today, on this small global earth, we are told that the human population is around uh, 8 billion. So among the 8 billion, you will not find two individuals 100% identical by the body or by the mindset, by the sound. Even twin brothers and sisters also have, when look closely, there is some different identity. And that, that shows each individual is a, a unique individual. Yet, there are three basic grounds which make entire humanity equal. Equal among the equals. Today, they talk about uh, equal among the unequals and among the equals. So by both way, the humanity, if you think it is equal among the unequals, and it is also equal among the equals. This humanity are equal. Number one, wanting well-being and not wanting suffering and pain. There is not a single individual who wants pain and suffering and don't want the well-being and happiness. The desire, the want for well-being and the desire not wanting to pain and suffering, in that way each one is equal, there is no difference in spite of bodily and uh, otherwise all attitudes are maybe different in uniqueness. Then the second thing is uh, from the viewpoint of uh, social system, the right to pursue well-being and the right to avoid the suffering, that is also equal to everyone. I am talking basically for the human beings, but it can include all sentient beings. The right to pursue and right to avoid unhappiness and right to pursue happiness, the right has a... You cannot say is, you cannot say to any individual, that individual does not have the right. If you look into the 
just way, proper way. And the third equality is uh, the potential. The potential to achieve uh, the highest goal. Freedom from all kind of suffering. Everyone has that potential. Temporarily, how much effort can be done, that may be differ. But basically, the contamination of mind does not get into the nature of the consciousness, nature of the subtle mind. It is uh, just a temporary disturbance, external cover that can be removed. There is a way to remove it. Cause and conditions, they remove it. So therefore, this is the three basic uh, ground. The wanting happiness and don't wanting unhappiness. And right, they have right to pursue happiness and uh, avoid unhappiness. And they have the potential and the possibility to get out of complete freedom from the bondage through which we have to suffer and get enlightenment or salvation, so to speak. So in this way, each one is equal. That means all these equal individuals can live harmoniously, cooperatively, free from violence and conflict that is absolutely possible. And in this possibility, the unification of all diverse nations and the individuals and the groups and races that will be uh, easy and also effective ground to reduce the sufferings for all humanity and improve the human condition much better. By that way, the humanity can live harmoniously with the nature and thereby the conflict between living beings and nature will reduce. And that is the only way to face, to remove the challenges of natural disasters which we are facing in this very particular time. So the possibility of unity, necessary of unity, and the uh, goodness of the unity, these things we shall have to uh, think about. Then we shall have to also examine the excuses or the uh, false causes which uh, we argue for the division of uh, living beings, particularly the human beings, on the base of uh, color, on the base of uh, race or ethnicity or geographical territory and the habits of life. All these are false reasons on which the humanity can be divided and they cannot be united. For the harmonious living, the different race does not make any harm. If we look uh, 
the entire states and nations of the world, majority of them, they are multinational state. If we consider the nationality is uh, one, of, one of the reasons to be divided, first of all, the notion of nation is also metal projection. There is no on the ground a reality of nationality. There may be different facial appearance, color of skin or language. They are all different because of the uh, place in which they are born, in which they are live, and no relationship with the far away living creatures in the primitive age. So that's why different languages are evolved. Different col color of skin is also evolved. All this does not make the individual different from a human being. The basic nature of human being always remain, and this cannot change due to language or due to um, habits, which may call it culture or system, uh, which may not be uh, uh, make difference due to the location where the person is born and brought up. So by all this, the notion that my group, my race, my nation is uh, more positive than the others, or particularly different as a human being, different from the others. These are all wrong notions which need to be uh, examined and uh, reduced and uh, eliminated. So thereafter, the real unity can be uh, achieved to respect to each other. All differences are Now, in the modernity, most of the uh, religious traditions are decayed and disappeared, and the name and the institutions of religions are left, uh, which are used for division among the men and also conflict among the men. That is the most unfortunate part. So the religious leaders should pay more attention to this. Actually, honestly speaking, today the existence of religion on this earth is uh, very, very uh, small, uh, scarce. Only institutions and names are being remained. My late friend, Professor Panikar, used to say, we shall have to look to the religious traditions in three different components. The religiousness, religiosity, and religionism. The religiousness is the real teaching or doctrine of the basic religion, Buddhist, Vedic, Sankha, Nyayaka, 
Christianity, Muslim, so on and so forth. And those teachings are to be practiced by the individuals, and those individuals become a religious person. And becoming a religious person, they will be serving the entire world, entire universe equally, no differentiation. The religiousness is the real source of uh, unity, binding to every human being, every sentient being, because all of these sentient beings have been considered to be an object of compassionate mind. Then religiosity, the temples, the churches, the statues, the rituals, the pujas. Among them, five, six percent may be belonging to real religion. The rest of the things are all social activity. And that religionism is uh, considered not practicing the religion, yet the name of religion is uh, considered of my, my religion. And that is absolutely irreligion. There's not religion. So we have to express the position clearly. Whosoever is thinking and speaking about uh, differentiate oneself on the basis of religion, then that person has, uh, that person is not a religious person. It cannot be considered to be a religious activity or religious person. Unfortunately, today we use the two vocabulary without any thinking commonly, religious intolerance and religious tolerance. We must be in, encourage religious tolerance, improve religious tolerance. And religious intolerance must be uh, discouraged. So this is a very funny language. Anyone, a religious person, can never be intolerant. If someone is intolerant, that is the biggest evidence that he or she is an irreligious person, has no religion at all. Then again, religious tolerance. Religions are not to be tolerated. They are to be respected. To tolerate means uh, I do not agree, but I not oppose. I just have a tolerance for that. So this is because Buddha was the only teacher who said, don't believe me without examination. Buddha had repeatedly said his disciples that don't accept my words because you have faith and devotion to me. My words may be important for yourself, but you will only become important when you examine it thoroughly and you understand the meaning of these words through your own rational mind. So he makes the metaphor like a goldsmith examines the gold by putting it in fire, by cutting it by instruments, and by rubbing it to uh, stones and this kind of stuff. Similarly, you should examine my words, my teachings, <coughs> by all kind of uh, rationality and logic, when you find the reality by, th by your own examination and analysis, then only you should uh, um, take it. Then it becomes your own knowledge, your own knowledge which is uh, coming from me. Otherwise, uh, there's a great chance of misunderstanding or no understanding. No understanding is uh, less harmful 
but misunderstanding, something misinterpretation, which happened in some many other traditions as well. So, therefore, the basis of unity, and by unity, entire humanity, entire sentient being. Of course, we cannot reach uniting the entire humanity, but we can reach to our own society. How far we can unite it with our efforts, and on what basis the understanding of being an interbeing and loving kindness and serving mind, how it can be utilized in proper way to uh, unification of the uh, follow humanity. And that unification is uh, not only for the benefit of the united persons alone. Through this, we shall have to reach, to deliver the final goodness or the well-being of the entire sentient being in the world. So that is how we move uh, our effort in that direction. So with these uh, few words, I think uh, we have to uh, break for half an hour, tea break, and uh, after coming back, we shall uh, do few things as I um, I think it's better to um, to inform you now. Usually, after coming back, your reaction and comments on the topic of un unity and a further little. Then the after, we shall have to conclude. Today is the last day. Before conclusion, uh, we hear the future plan, the roadmap, how our effort goes on. And then, then thereafter, our five days effort, whatever positive economic force we might earn, we shall have to dedicate it. For dedication, I will read the adverse matter training. And uh, that is uh, translated in English also. So you will have, so that, that will, uh, that have a reference of all topics we have discussed in these uh, five days. So you can have some kind of uh, how the ancient Tibetan masters used the matter training and then how they come up realization. So these were the after session, after this session, after tea break session, this will be done. Anything which has a beginning that bound to be an end, that is the law of nature. So we have started five day seminar and uh, with some inconveniences or inconveniences that four days has been completed. Now this is the fifth day. So it shows us the nature of impermanence and we shall have to be all the time aware of the transitoriness and uh, impermanence of the world. Okay. So this world is uh, inappropriate to use for the uh, religion or for the individual. Each individual, each human being need to be 
respected, not to be tolerated. Tolerance is uh, mostly goes to the uh, explicit actions. Actions, how you react, then that is a tolerance or intolerance. So the disappearance of religiousness, the remaining of the uh, religious institutions and name, few years before one of the religious conferences, we used to talk about it is better to uh, destroy all the symbols of the religious institutions and which is not a cause for the humanity, create loving each other instead of dividing and hating each other. So this kind of religion, name of religion must be disappear. It will be better. So similarly, all other different causes on the basis of race, nation, all these are false. So for that, we shall have to uh, examine uh, the causes and uh, to establish all these causes are false. And there's no, in reality, by considering differences are not unitable, the diverses are not unitable, and uh, the unification will not help to any in human being or sentient being. That is wrong, wrong notion, and that need to be uh, proved. Realizing being and interbeing and uh, cultivating loving mind and serving mind, then I think it will be uh, very easy to uh, reach to the uh, uniting all living beings or sentient beings in real sense. So having said that, one thing we, all, we should also have to um, be aware, be conscious, is uh, what we mean exactly united unification. And it is not uh, removing the diversity. It is not making things uh, uniform. Today a process is uh, very forcefully going on is uh, so-called globalization. In the process of globalization, people might think that the globalization means uniting everything in this globe. The globalization is not uniting, that is removing the diversity, reducing the diversity. And particularly in the process of education, in the process of language, in the process of clothes and uh, customs. And there are many things. The diverse beauty is being slowly, unknowingly reduced or destroyed and uh, every become a kind of uh, similar. It is not oneness, but the similar. 
and similarity causes the reduction and disappearance of many individual group or territories unique identity unique culture unique language and a lot of wisdom which are contained in that uniqueness is uh, begin to uh, lose so those lose are really very harmful to entire humanity each one of the wisdom traditional wisdom which one of the uh, traditional thought they are very very important actually the globalization is one instrument the conflict between modernity and tradition the conflict between modernity and tradition is also one of the cause to hindrance to be unification of all humanity or all sentient beings so therefore we need to understand the importance and the necessity of traditional wisdom and how to uh, protect the traditional wisdom from destroying it by the modern way of living the modernity i don't know exactly how to define what is modernity but i know how to define the tradition without uh, recognizing the real meaning of tradition then we may not be able to differentiate tradition from the long perpetuating systems and habits which are need to be changed that also necessary to know today many people mix up the bad habits perpetuated for a long time as a social habit and with that the good traditions also taken together and then renouncing both that is very harmful there are different ways of interpreting tradition but the kumar swami's uh, interpretation is more appropriate and i think that is real definition of tradition kumar swami says originated from divine source coming down through unbroken lineage and a very viable reason logic and common sense these three components are there then the things should be considered as a tradition and not coming from the authentic source for example what is buddhist tradition to define buddhist tradition it must be taught by buddha himself we should have a, a authentic source the buddha's own words and then is coming down to my teacher without breaking the lineage buddha to ananda and the true someone like that the oral transmission and coming down the lineage and then it comes to me i am able to verify it through right logic and rationality and also it should not be um, 
against the common sense understanding. When uh, Buddhism was um, destroyed in the 9th century by Lantarma, and for about 100 years, 70, 75 years, Buddhism was very much uh, uh, destroyed in Tibet. And during that period, so many things have been messed up. Then thereafter, Atisha visited, and uh, Tibetan kings themselves have make a lot of effort. Then they have done a huge project for many years to recompare the translated texts back to the original Indian Sanskrit and Pali and uh, Pakiti texts. So this kind of, because when the doubt was arising whether it was exactly coming from the Buddha, so similarly, the Christianity, whatever, the basic source should be go to the uh, first teacher, the authentic person, and then there's no pollution in between, contamination in between, come down to the, and yet it is verifiable. Because Buddha was the only teacher who said, don't believe me without examination. But I have repeatedly said to his disciples that don't accept my words because you have faith and devotion to me. My words may be important for yourself, but it will only become important when you examine it thoroughly and you understand the many of these words through your own rational mind. So he make the metaphor like a goldsmith examines the gold by putting it in fire, by cutting it by instruments, and by rubbing it to uh, stones and this kind of stuff. Similarly, you should examine my words, my teachings, <coughs> by all kind of uh, rationality and logic, when you find the reality by, to, by your own examination and analysis, then only you should uh, um, take it, then it becomes your own knowledge, your own knowledge which is uh, coming from me. Otherwise, uh, there's a great chance of misunderstanding or no understanding. No understanding is uh, less harmful, but misunderstanding, something misinterpretation, which happened in some many other traditions as well. So, therefore, the basis of unity, and by unity, entire humanity, entire sentient being. Of course, we cannot reach uniting the entire humanity, but we can reach to our own society. How far we can unite it with our efforts, and on what basis the understanding of being the interbeing and loving kindness and serving mind how it can be utilized in proper way to uh, unification of the uh, follow humanity. And that unification is uh, not only for the benefit of the united persons alone. Through this, we shall have to reach to deliver the final goodness or the well-being of the entire sentient being in the world. So that is how we move.
uh, our effort in that direction. So with this uh, few words, I think uh, we have to uh, break for half an hour, tea break, and uh, after coming back, we shall uh, do few things as I um, I think it's better to um, to inform you now. Usually, after coming back, your reaction and comments on the topic of un unity and a further little. Then thereafter, we shall have to conclude. Today is the last day. Before conclusion, uh, we hear the future plan, the roadmap, how our effort goes on. And then, then thereafter, our five days effort, whatever positive economic force we might earn, we shall have to dedicate it. For dedication, I will read uh, the adverse matter training. And uh, that is uh, translated in English also. So you will have, so that that will, uh, that have a reference of all topics we have discussed in these uh, five days. So you can have some kind of uh, how the ancient Tibetan masters used the matter training and then how they come up realization. So these were the after session, after this session, after tea break session, this will be done. Anything which has a beginning that bound to be an end, that is the law of nature. So we have started five day seminar and uh, with some inconveniences or inconveniences that four days has been completed. Now this is the fifth day. So it shows us the nature of impermanence and we shall have to be all the time aware of the transitoriness and uh, impermanence of the world. Okay. Okay, we shall resume the seminar. Any points? Observations? Comments? You are sharing? Please do start. Thank you very much for um, all your teachings and your uh, sharing. For <laughs> Not teaching. My mistake, I was sick yesterday, so I didn't attend. <laughs> <laughs> this um, and thank you for the reminder, everybody. <laughs> um, we have uh, all together. Um, try to um, combine uh, the learnings and the discoveries that we made this week um, with <coughs> our own um, individual uh, expectations and abilities to, to act. Uh, and we've tried to put it into what you uh, asked us. What, is, uh, what are the things that we are willing and uh, expecting to do as individuals, as, as professionals? in companies or in NGOs um, as citizens of our own country and uh, what are we going to do in order to uh, heal the world uh, both for human and, and nature. So I will, we will, with Eric, we will redo the different elements. 
Um, so we are participants of the Love Force Leadership Seminar in Dharamsala, um, the first week of July 2024. Um, we collectively elaborated this roadmap to work the talk with the clear vision of the goals to be achieved by 2030. As individuals, um, we will be sharing with people around us. <clears throat> we will be ambassadors of the love message within family, friends, colleagues, etc. to build a new world. We will champion the idea that one can be spiritual without being religious. We will practice meditation to slow down for inner peace. We will be responsible consumers, focusing on need and not on greed. Some of us will uh, continue or become vegetarian. We will try to be our true self with our fundamental goodness. We will practice non-violence communication and love with equanimity. We will be learning continuously. We will deepen and implement uh, the Charter of Universal Responsibility and the eight, eight verses of training the mind. And we will practice the Be the Love Will, being, interbeing, loving, serving, and uniting. <coughs> As professionals in companies or NGOs, we will promote regenerative business and global ecosystem. We will be fully dedicated to mindset and business models shifts in corporation and influence networks to incorporate wisdom into the business. We will help CEOs, business leaders and their teams to transform processes, business models, organization and corporate culture in order to achieve the 17 SDGs of 2030 agenda. We will develop law force intelligence and leadership. We will coach CEOs, ensure executives inner peace in their professional spheres. We will design and deploy training programs for leaders and their teams and the teams of leadership and SDGs based on Buddhist principles. We will conduct field research and teaching courses on applied spirituality and sustainable policy. We will bring meditation programs and spiritual teachings to the yoga world. We will develop our networks to spread global regenerative cooperation. We will spread influence and inspiration through books and other communication channels. And finally, we will organize conferences and seminars. As citizens of our countries, we will train managers with high value programs in executive education. We will introduce courses on spiritual leadership into Canadian universities. So future generation of Canadian leaders have an alternative outlook. We will celebrate the International Day of Conscience with yoga communities. We will organize conscious festivals. We will mentor disadvantaged young adults to help them find jobs. We will create intergenerational communities, repairing cafes, etc. We will spend more time with children for society subjects. We will produce documentary films on ecologic actions and mindset, and we'll become responsible consumers. As human beings serving mankind, future generation, and the earth, we will celebrate the International Day of Conscience with love for peace on the April 5th. We will create a committee in charge of developing the network and a special ecosystem on the International Day of Conscience. Website, groups on LinkedIn and YouTube, interviews with love leaders and young change makers. We will create a traveling exposition about conscience and love in Paris by UNESCO and other places. Working with the government of India and select spiritual leaders to integrate Indian wisdom into public policy. And India will work with the G20 to promote wisdom-based public policy. We will work on a mindset shift to transform the economy from an extractive to a regenerative economy. We will contribute to help corporate leaders change their mindset and amplify their ability to work for a better world. 
we will use the principle of interbeing, connectedness, compassion and love to show how corporations can change their raison d'être to the purpose of business is to make the world a better place and in so doing make a profit. We will give a voice to nature and give to nature the same rights as humans. We will develop the three P's, protect, preserve and prevent. We will filter and purify water networks with consciousness, develop eco-friendly projects and uh, regenerative agriculture. And finally, we will bring SDGs into yoga teacher training programs. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. It is very uh, comprehensive and exhaustive. I very much appreciate. So we shall now should make effort by each one of us to materialize, not looking for or not having any expectation we should do all these things selflessly. And uh, one suggestion I would like make to this, your second paragraph. Designing and developing training programs for leaders and their teams on the uh, terms of leadership and SDGs is based on Buddhist principles. We may change it to uh, spiritual principles instead of a particular uh, religion, spiritual principles or ethical principles, what, what will be? As I mentioned before also, one few things I needed to add about the unity and also the serving. Yesterday, a point was raised that there are many corporations who do social work and social services. <coughs> they are very appreciable. And also, we are determined to uh, unification of the humanity. And in that process, recognizing the diversity yet not objecting the qualitative superiority or inferiority that makes unequality. Many cooperates who are doing huge philanthropy work, helping the poor and then there's a chance or danger of a mindset if you are not completely mindfulness, mindful and observing your mindset. The helpers consider to be more superior than the persons to be helped. So this often comes without noticing. The giver is more successful. I'm able to uh, help to these people. These people are help helpless. They are not able to do all these things for themselves. So this kind of 
qualitatively different. Dwyer is more efficient or successful or superior than the group to whom they are helping. The sense of compassion and sense of pity is a little different. So compassion is not a feeling of pityness. So compassion always uh, respect the object to whom the compassionate mind is uh, generating. So the feeling of equality, equality in the sense it is a chance. At this moment, I have no wealth to give them, and they have less wealth. It is a, a chance. At any time, they may become more success, and I become less success. And in past life, in future life, if someone believes in the continuity of life, then this uh, all, the potential of success as I have, the same potential of success the other persons also have. So this is only a time and chance, the shifting. At this moment, I am successful. They are less successful. But this time, may round, goes round at any time. So therefore, as I mentioned, the three bases of equality, and also we have talked about the uh, equanimity, training of equanimity to everyone. There's no basis of differentiating. So this uh, non-differentiating and uh, sense of equality is basis of oneness and unity. So sorry, there's time now. Other people can make comments. Thank you very much for very uh, important comments to share with us. As I mentioned before, Vinoba Bhavi was very much uh, hopeful that in future the modern scientific knowledge will meet to the uh, ancient wisdom of spirituality and uh, then it will uh, bring a complete new world order. So I used to uh, argue with him, it is your wishful thinking and it may not be uh, able to actually materialize. My argument was that modern science people never pay attention to improvement of inner consciousness, only improvement of external things. They don't know how to increase the potential of eye organ and eye consciousness so that able to see the small particles without any external material, magnifying glass or something like that. Instead of working on the magnifying glass, they could work to one's own organ and the consciousness so that without the magnifying glass, the eye consciousness could be in. So therefore, they are all looking external and we are looking internal. So how they can meet? <coughs> but she was very hopeful. And then, as I mentioned, the His Holiness, the Dalai Lama's encounter with the science people, modern science people, now the Mind Life Institute is doing very well, and they have 
number of uh, important encounters and published the reports as well. One of my friend, Kalpura, have long time back written the Tao of Physics. And in that, he also make a chapter on Buddhist science. <clears throat> so that also gives that there may be some chance to uh, meet in these two um, tradition, the modern science and the uh, inner science, not only Buddhist, the entire ancient science of India, so many different way of looking the things. So basic principles, what the science is talking and what the spiritual traditions, the ancient treatises are talking, on the real objective ground, there are many now come to same conclusion. For example, the um, force of gravity, the modern science people had found very later. But in the uh, first century AD, uh, BC, um, Arya Dev already mentioned why the water goes down, not up, because the gravity force is remained on the earth, the low down. That's why water is going down. Similarly, the composition of all the rough things, which are composite of the small particles, and how the small particles remain separately, and there are gaps in between. The fifth, fifth element, the space is uh, indispensable. All these are uh, very clear in the Indian ancient treatises, particularly Abhidham. So now that were found that by science people very later on. As I mentioned several times, the things are different and uh, opposite nature. In those opposite nature, it holds the potential or the force, the cause. And then they, in uh, cooperating each other, it manifests. And that cooperation has uh, its own potential and force. When the force is exhausted, the cooperation comes to end, and the separation starts. So that's how the uh, sentient being's body uh, is a very clear example. When a person is born, it was combination of all the elements. They are able to manifest in the shape of human baby because all are cooperative, cohesive, and uh, supplementing each other. By that way, the manifestations come. When they <coughs> grow, the potential of manifestation and cooperation is increasing, then become old age, that force is decreasing. And finally, the force of uniting potential is uh, come to an end. Then the, all these components are disintegrated. That is death. Final disintegration is uh, the gross body and the subtle consciousness. The body is uh, unable to hold as base of consciousness. That means the disintegration. So all these are quite quite clear. One may observe them. 
So I was talking, referring to uh, my loving late friend, Reverend Dimon Panikar, a Christian priest and also scholar. He used to introduce in a very funny way himself. I am a Burmese by birth. He was from Kerala. Burmese means Hindu by birth. I am a Christian priest by training, and I am Buddhist by practice, something like that. <laughs> so he was talking about uh, religiousness and religionism and religiosity. Religiosity comes to the point, people think this is my religion, and my religion is uh, better than any other religion. So this kind of uh, projection or way of thinking to the religion, that is uh, become an ism, capitalism or communism or religionism. So that is uh, definitely not a part of religion. So someone say, I am a Buddhist, so I must uh, try to uh, separate Buddhism everywhere. And my, I must uh, encourage people to learn Buddhism. Uh, so this kind of thing, it may be come out of compassion and loving, but without willingness of the other, these kind of things are not a result of religiousness. That's why Buddha have a, make a law, make a discipline that you cannot teach without asking for teaching. You cannot explain the, your religion without asking. But it comes religiosity. Now today the asking has become a ritual. All the uh, ceremonies, the Nayak or the uh, monk will say, now you start your uh, asking, your prayer for the panchil. Then somebody will uh, pray for that. The real sense is uh, without uh, one's own initiative or willingness, we cannot just share or voluntarily share or impose religious information as well. So therefore, religionism become a kind of uh, possessiveness by the person as my religion. Wherever my or the I comes, the real thing is being distorted. So that is about uh, religionism, according to uh, Panikar. So it appeared to us that the religion, religiousness completely disappeared from the mindset of the people. I experienced it uh, in Tibet during the struggle with China. Tibet considered to be a Buddhist country, but at that time, people could not remain compassionate to the Chinese occupiers. And we have violently resist. I think that is the only root cause for the uh, downfall and uh, the problems which we are facing for the last 70 years. So if we are able to make a compassionate mind, meeting compassionate mind at that time, it might be a different scenario, but uh, who knows? It is very, very difficult. Even today, His Holiness thinks, or we also think, some small percentage of Tibetan people become in real compassionate without any fault, 
complete compassionate for the Chinese authorities and for that matter any opposed. I think uh, the issue can be resolved much easier and within no time. In Tibet also, there are good practitioners who are able to maintain the cup in mind. One of the solidness physicians who able to uh, escape in India after 1980s, he was uh, remained in a prison, faced a great deal of uh, torture for 23 years imprisoned. When he came here, somebody asked, you face a lot of difficulties in the prison. So he says, yes. I face three times a great danger. And uh, I was almost hopeless. Then he says, a great danger means your life was uh, threatened. He says, no. There was three times due to the absolutely unreasonable behavior of the people in the prison. I almost lost my compassion for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but fortunately, I was able to uh, retain myself by the grace of the teachers and so on. So therefore, What I said these days, uh, how the apparently impossible mindset is possible because the mind is uh, not hate or anger or negative by its nature. By its nature, love compassion, and peace. This nature can be temporarily distorted by external causes and conditionings. Those conditionings are also not a permanent one. They can be removable. So we keep training the mind continuously, then it will come back its own unpolluted nature. It will manifest by itself. So only we shall have to do is uh, the potential of the immeasurable, compassionate mind, which has uh, inherently with our consciousness, shall have to be given positive uh, conditions. And that positive conditions will uh, stimulate uh, the potential. And that potential will uh, flower or uh, will manifest into the real compassionate mind, which is possible. All the time, we watch our mind is compassionate to oneself. It will never be uh, uh, unconsiderate or hate to oneself. Sometimes people do think like that. I will not forgive myself. I will not pardon to myself. Something like that, that is very dear. Usually, the mind, its own course of time, it has a loving kindness, compassion for oneself. Then we try to train the mind as equanimity, not differentiating the other from the self, and later on, the exchange of other and self Exchange doesn't mean our mental approach to other is uh, changed as of oneself. 
and our mental approach to oneself is changed for others. So this change of self and the other will facilitate you to manifest the real compassionate mind for the others. So it is uh, absolutely possible. We have uh, half an hour more, so I think uh, we could read slowly through the eight verses, ten in our mind. And uh, I may comment a little bit. So, <coughs> the first verse is, uh, by thinking of all sentient beings as more precious than a wish-fulfilling jewel. For accomplishing the highest aim, I will always hold them dear. Because uh, enlightenment, the Buddhahood, is can only be achieved by practicing the uh, mind of uh, compassion and loving and buddhicitta. For that, the sentient beings are only the object. And um, Shantideva said, the Buddhahood is uh, able to achieve due to Buddha's teaching and due to the sentient beings' help. Therefore, why not respect all the sentient beings as equal to Buddha? Because uh, for the enlightenment, both are equal causes. The second is whenever I, whenever I am in the company of others, I will regard myself as the lowest among all. And from the depth of my heart, cherish others supremely. Because this is a habit of our mind, condition of our mind. Whenever, I, whenever we accompany with other, all the time, some kind of comparison, then by that comparison, I know better than the other. I can do more efficiently than other, something like that. Or sometimes the otherwise also. But in order to uh, keep purity of the compassionate mind to the other, we shall have to think oneself lesser than the other, so that the uh, pride and ankar may not enter into you. The third is, uh, in my every action, I will watch my mind. And the moment the destructive emotions arise, I will confront them strongly and avoid them, since they will hurt both me and the other. So the mindfulness teaching, in every my action, I will watch my mind, because action are, all comes from the mind. If mind is pure, the action may go a little bit wrong. That may not make much difference. So any moment the trust, destructive emotion arises. So if you are not mindful, the destructive emotion arises and remains there, and which harms you and the other, and you realize later on, then there is not much use for regret them. So, it's, so therefore, it is very necessary to uh, strongly avoid them or confront them as soon as it is arising or is going to arise. So that kind of alertness is necessary. The fourth is whenever I see ill-natured beings or those overwhelmed by heavy misdeeds or suffering, I will cherish them as something real, as though I would find a priceless treasure. Because you see such thing, then you will be uh, able to uh, serve them. You will be able to have more compassionate to them. So to have such object of compassionate mind 
that is very real, like treasure. Whenever someone, the fifth is, whenever someone out of envy does me wrong by attacking or blatting me, I will take a de defeat upon myself and give the victory to others. Whosoever confronted me, I should not try to be myself. Here, it means that uh, myself, oneself should be aimed for victory and the other to defeat. But the other's action is uh, wrong, negative, then that action shall have to be opposed, as uh, we discussed before. The action is not to be ignored, but the actor is to be loved. So that shall have to be. By that way, the victory will go to the other. The sixth is even one, some more, someone I have helped or in whom I have placed great hope. Mistrust me very unjustly. I will view the person as a true spiritual teacher that we uh, already discussed the other day. Someone you never expect to do some wrong thing to you, they do injustice. Then one shall view that person as a true spiritual teacher. It teaches you the uh, uncertainty and the change in nature of the world and what you expect may not happen in that way. So that's why it's a good teacher. The seventh, in brief, directly or indirectly, I will offer help and happiness to all my mothers. To all my mothers meant that um, all the sentient beings, the sentient beings uh, as addressed as mother, mother sentient being. Because in one way, they happen to be your mother once upon a time, as the Buddhists believe the continuity of life, past and future life. And otherwise also, if you don't believe uh, uh, sentient beings, uh, don't believe the continuity of life, even them, all sentient beings are like mother, because mothers take care of you. Similarly, the all sentient beings take care of everyone, as we discussed before. I secretly take care of myself, all their hurt and suffering. The exchange of self and the other, to take other suffering to one, on oneself and to give one's happiness to others. The eighth is I will uh, learn to keep all these practices untainted by thought of eight worldly concerns. My rec may I recognize all things as the illusions, and without attaching, without attachment, gain freedom from bondage. Eight worldly things is uh, the price, the defamation, or achieved, not achieved, happiness, 
and unhappiness. Comfortable and uncomfortable. In the worldly, someone prize you, you feel happy. Someone uh, um, defends you, you feel unhappy. And uh, you achieve something, you feel happy. You not achieve something, you are feeling unhappy. And uh, You feel comfortable, feel happy, and uncomfortable, you don't like it. And you are famous, you are happy, you are unfamous, you are not happy. So this kind of thing, one thing is good and one thing is bad. So these are the eight things. Jitin chimpa nyeta ma nyeta, deta me de, nyeta me nyeta, du me chicha. Or this, these different eight things shall have to be uh, without contending, choosing one and renouncing the other. So without that, I recognize all worldly things just like uh, illusion. And without that illusion, I go out of attachment and give freedom from the bondage. This is the very short and gives a lot of insight and way of training the mind in a way. So with this uh, few remarks, then we might have a not might, we must have uh, earned a great deal of uh, positive karmic force. Good deeds by talking about uh, compassion, love and service to entire sentient being during last, uh, during last five days. And uh, all these uh, individual merits and uh, collective merits we have earned, they should also give in or dedicate for the benefit of all sentient beings. And uh, for that purpose, a dedication is uh, considered to be necessary. In daily life, whenever you accumulate a positive karmic force, positive karma, you must dedicate it. Otherwise, that uh, merit or that positive karmic force might be destroyed through the mindset of anger. Anger is a destroyer of merit and positive economic force. So if we are dedicated the things for the others, then the anger will not be able to uh, destroy the merits and the positive economic force. So therefore, to conclude, we may conclude later earlier need not to wait, the time is up, because uh, <clears throat> it is not a, a bondage. We may go up to one o'clock, but we can also conclude before. So I feel uh, sorry for you people having a lot of difficulty to reach in Dharamshala. And also I heard that now Many of you are worried for reaching back to catch your international flights. And many people are, have to go by road. That's quite a, a 
tiresome. Anyhow, this is a part of the uh, worldly life we shall have to face all the time. One thing I very much uh, regret was uh, this time. His Holiness the Dalai Lama is not present in Dharamshala. Previously, when he was not scheduled to visit U.S. for treatment, Wednesday was fixed, the Wednesday morning session was fixed to be with His Holiness, and that was not materialized. Anyhow, you have the message of His Holiness, the principle of universal responsibility, And uh, <clears throat> the book, Compassionate Revolution, and uh, Charter of uh, Universal Responsibility, they are very um, relevant to understand His Holiness' messages. So you can read them, or you can apply them in your life. That will be uh, equal or more important than meeting in person. So we as writings are very um, appropriate and uh, by understanding His Holiness uh, instructions and advice in an appropriate way, and then she wrote these uh, write-ups. This would be most useful. So I wish you all able to do, to serve the entire sentient being as we intend, and also have a safe and a easy journey back to home, and uh, continue the effort of serving the entire sentient beings. So with these words, I will dedicate our merits to the benefit of our sentient beings. Dhani sinja dhanji na yeji nurbole na Tenjo dove sambai Tato je varanzi maraj Kondo so dandu beze danye kende menta. Shena samba tabai chodo je bonze baraj. Chela ma kendo ranjela toje nyo moje mata. Daje ma ronje bena. Zenda wadun endu burj. Rajin embe zenjena didu jabu nyetun. Rajin dirda jibajin nyebaraka vijin zinj. Didu jabu nyetun. Jinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinjinj
Thank you very much.